Alright, so in this video, we'll be analyzing the February-March 2024 paper to see what to expect in the May-June version of this paper. So subscribe and let's dive right in. We're going to start by analyzing the distribution of marks in the February-March paper. Compare these to previous years, we're going to use the trends to help us predict the mark distributions for the May-June papers. Make sure to watch to the end so that you know which topics to look out for in the May-June series. So here's the mark distribution for the February-March paper and looking at it, Quite surprisingly, there's nothing unexpected that happened. Everything seems quite reasonable. In fact, if we compare these marks to the average marks from 2020 to 2023, you will notice many similarities. Algebra, complex numbers, and differentiation make up the top three in the February-March paper, which is the exact same top three over the past four years. And at the bottom end, we have numerical solutions, integration, and logarithms. Apart from integration, this is pretty much consistent with the data over the last four years. So what could this mean for the major series? Let's analyze the February-March paper to find out. Starting off with Algebra. Algebra somewhat overperformed its 10.5 mark average, but this is typical of it. It's a very explosive topic, having a ceiling of 18 marks. In the February-March paper, it had three questions. The first being a three mark polynomial division question. The second being a five mark binomial expansion question. And the third being a five mark partial fractions question, which brings its tally up to 13 marks in the February-March paper. This is actually quite a common pairing of algebra questions, but it's usually a 5 mark partial fractions question paired with a 5 mark binomial expansion question, and then a 4 mark from one of modulus, polynomial division, or factor and remainder theorem. Algebra also happened to have a very explosive 2023, averaging a ridiculous 12.3 marks per paper. Since it has started this year strongly, I'm inclined to think that it will also be quite explosive this year. So in the major series, I'm predicting it to average around 12 marks per paper. Moving on to complex numbers, one of the more consistent high performers. It recorded 12 marks in the February and March paper, slightly higher than its average over the past four years. I did notice that Cambridge included a six mark Euler form question. So poly up on your understanding of the Euler form because it may come up in the May June series. For the May June series, I predict that it goes slightly under its 12 mark season opener to averaging around 10 marks in the May June series. Differentiation opened with 9 marks. I don't expect any massive improvements from it given that its average over the past 4 years is 10 marks per paper. It was a bit surprising that its tangent question carried only 3 marks, yet historically it has carried 4 or even 5 marks. And its stationary point question, which typically carries 4 to 6 marks, was technically under numerical solutions so these could be reasons for its slight underperformance and watch out for these concepts as they may reappear in the May June series so going into the May June series I expect that it maintains the 10 mark average the differential equations question in the February March paper was a bit more challenging than usual hence the ridiculous 9 mark showing most differential equations are around 8 marks so I don't expect that to change in the May June series so I predict an 8 mark average for the differential equations in the May June series the trick question was also a bit more challenging than usual. It came with a weird looking harmonic identity, that's the R sign question, which carried 4 marks, followed by a 5 marks of the equation question. Given that trig hasn't done well historically, I don't think this high performance will carry over into May June, so I expect it to drop down to around 7 marks. The vectors question in the February March paper was a bit of a giveaway with slightly less challenging questions, hence the underperformance from its average of 9.6 marks down to 8 marks. I do expect more high order vector questions in the May June series, so I predicted to average around 10 marks per paper. Numerical solutions are a pretty average showing with 6 marks, nothing to scream about and I expect more of the same in the May June series. It's one of those topics that typically only get one question per paper, so it should probably be averaging around 7 marks per paper in the May June series. Integration is probably the biggest talking point in this paper. It only recorded an underwhelming 5 marks. It usually gets at least two questions per paper but this time it only got one part question that was five marks but don't read too much into this because the differential equations question which is technically integration carried a lot of marks so i suspect cambridge's thinking was that they had to remove some marks from integration to allow them to include the monstrous nine marker for differential equations i expect integration to be back on par with its average in the major series so i predicted to be around eight marks per paper finally 
we have the boring logarithmic and exponential function which was pretty much in line with its 4.2 average it recorded a total of four marks in the february march paper so i have to say the question itself was actually quite an interesting one typically you have one variable that you're evaluating but in this question there were multiple variables and we also saw cambridge playing around with this idea and the partial fractions question so i wouldn't put it above cambridge to continue experimenting with more questions like these in the major and series so stay vigilant but for logarithmic I expect more of the same going into the major series. It should average around 3 to 4 marks per paper unless they bring a linear low question. Don't expect anything outrageous from this topic. So this is my predicted mark distribution for the major 2024 pure 3 paper. Use these to help you plan out your final study timetables. Prioritize high performing topics but don't neglect the lesser topics either because usually they'll end up costing you seemingly small marks which quickly add up and could cause you to fail. Tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. CAT for the stats one version of this video but until then bye bye